I've been hiking with the Apple Watch Ultra for over six months now. I have a very good grasp of what it can do as a hiking watch and what it can't do as a hiking watch. And it doesn't always align with what we saw in that marketing video from Apple. I will share all of that with you here. Just one note, uh, I'm also the weirdo you might have seen on the trail who had two watches on, and that's because I wanted to compare the Apple Watch Ultra experience to my Garmin experience. I'm wearing a Garmin Epix, which has a uh, bright uh, AMOLED screen as well, just similar to what the Apple Ultra is. So in this video, I'll share with you what I learned about hiking with the Ultra, and also we'll compare it and contrast it a little bit with the Epics, and I'll give you some recommendations at the end if you're considering getting an Apple Watch Ultra so that you can hike with it. Uh, there's some things that you should probably be aware of. Now, before I dive in, I just wanna note that this is not a sponsored video in any way. I've not been uh, paid or promoted by Apple or Garmin. I didn't get any freebies or testers, any of that stuff. I bought both of these watches out of my own pocket with help from supporters like you. This video is entirely user supported. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Please consider supporting the site and subscribing if you want this type of content, if you want to help independent reviews like this. And uh, if you're finding the video helpful, a very easy thing you can do is just click that little thumbs up button. Actually interacting with the watch and wearing it out on the trail has been a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, overall, it's solid. It's a solid piece of hardware. It's definitely durable. Whatever they used for the screen and the casing and everything, it has not scratched. It's solid. It's always just worked. I've never broke it. Uh, and I've definitely, you know, thrashed it a little bit out there. The screen is nice and bright. I've never had a problem seeing it. And the buttons work. They're oversized buttons. The buttons just work. So overall, you know, the hardware works as promised in terms of extreme environments and the outdoors. I got an Alpine Loop with this because that's, you know, Alpine Loop sounds like something that might be good for hiking. I found it really hard to get on and get off. Getting that little hook in and getting it around every time took a lot more time than just putting on a regular watch band. So I ended up ditching that. The good news is that it takes these smaller size watch bands, the regular, you know, the ones you wear for a large regular Apple watch. Uh, so you can basically go onto Amazon and pick any cheapo watch band that works for you and put it on there and it works fine. And that's what I did. I just have a magnetic band uh, and it's been working great for me. Now there's a new action button on here. Action button, sounds exciting, right? Well, it only works with a handful of the baked in apps here on the watch. It doesn't work with say the All Trails app or the Gaia GPS app. You can customize it with a shortcut if your app supports watch shortcuts, which a lot of them don't. So the action button's functionality has been limited. I wish uh, it would be opened up or be available to other developers to harness, but it, I guess it's not the case. So the action button has been a bit of a dud, but if you want to control just the built-in apps, like the workout app, it works for that, but otherwise it's just kind of there. At one point interacting with this, I had a little bit of a mystery to solve. I would be hiking, everything would be fine, and then I would look down and my activity had stopped or something else had happened that I did not plan on. I finally figured out that it happened when I had long sleeves and it happened when the long sleeves or the cuff of like a jacket would catch on the buttons when I moved my arm around and it would pull on the buttons. Uh, the way I got around it was just by putting it on my other wrist so that the buttons weren't facing outward where the cuff is. You could also flip the whole watch uh, if you'd like to, if you're wearing it on your left wrist. So you have some options there. Similar situation happened when my sleeves were wet. Uh, if I moved and the screen came on and the sleeve, the wet sleeve went over the touchscreen, it could do things to the touchscreen. You can lock the touchscreen in some apps as well. So just something to be aware of. I wish those things were thought of before, uh, you know, before the watch came out. It's obviously, it's something that was, you know, designed for the outdoors, but probably not tested too well by actual hikers and backpackers and people who are using this with long sleeves and wet environments. And while we're talking about the screen, here's the thing with the screen. 99% of the time, it's fine to interact with the screen. And interacting with the screen for almost everything that's not the default workout app is necessary at some point. And you either have to swipe or pinch or tap or hold something down in order to interact with an app like Workout Doors or 
I'll tell you about some apps that I'm using a little bit later, but you have to interact with the screen. And like I said, you know, most of the time that's totally fine, but I found that when I was really tired, so if I was out hiking, you know, 15, 20 miles, doing 10, 12 hour days, then looking at the screen and trying to figure out where to tap or trying to get my finger on the exact uh, correct tap spot became more of a challenge and required a little more a little more attention than it probably should have. And then you contrast that with something like the Garmin Epix or the Garmin Phoenix. Now these watches have five buttons on them. The button layout's the same for all of these different watches. And they also have a touch screen, which you can disable or use in certain circumstances. But the nice thing about this Epix is that once you learn what the buttons are, so let's say you've you know used it for a week or two and you know where the buttons are, the layout is dead simple for this, and you can do everything with the buttons, which is very easy to do, whether you're tired, when the conditions are bad, if you have big heavy gloves on, even if you have mittens on or wet mittens, you know, it's not a problem. You can interact and do everything you need to on the Epix, whereas it's a little bit more challenging with the touchscreen, uh, depending on the app using the Apple Watch Ultra. Now, compared to other Apple watches, the battery on the Ultra is great. Compared to other outdoor watches like the Garmin's, it's not so great, but it gets the job done. Now, with the regular Apple watches, you have a essentially a ceiling of about six, seven hours of activity tracking. So if you wanna hike over six or seven hours, you're not able to do it. You have to take it off, recharge it. It's not practical. So that's your ceiling for recording. Uh, a hike, but with the Apple Watch Ultra, I'm getting 12 to 13 hours of battery time just in normal mode recording a hike. And I think for most people, 12 hours of hiking should be good for your longest day if you're doing like a Mount Whitney hike or a rim to rim, 12 hours is gonna cover it. Now I recommend putting the Apple Watch Ultra into low power mode. What low power mode does is it um, basically turns the always on screen off so the screen only comes on when you lift it up which is fine it, that worked fine and it also uh, tones down all of the communications with the phone using wi-fi and bluetooth and all of that effectively meaning you get less notifications when you're in the back country or outside of cell phone range that's fine uh, and you know who wants all of those notifications when you're out hiking as well so put it in low power mode and you should be fine for all of the uh, longest hikes. Now there is something called an, I think it's ultra low power mode where you can get 60 hours of activity tracking. That's not practical because that records a track every, or a point on a track every two minutes. And if you think about it, if you're hiking up switchbacks or something, you could be going you know, up and back on a switchback in two minutes and it's recording just a straight line. So effectively, if you use that ultra low power mode, you're gonna get uh, distances on your track recording that are not gonna be too accurate and probably just not even worth uh, recording it in the first place. So that's the battery, battery's great. It's also nice not having to like worry about charging this, you know, I'd always, uh, when I hiked with my other Apple Watch, be looking at that limit, like I hope the battery doesn't run out before my hike is over, because then I'm gonna maybe lose the hike and you know we'll lose all the data for it and lose it as a workout. With this, you don't have to worry about that. It's also nice in the greater scheme of things uh, because you can get, you know, if you have it in low power mode, I'm getting attacked here by a gnat, but if you put it in low power mode, you can get like at least a couple of days battery life out of it if it's not too intense. And, uh, you know, I could use this for a day. I could sleep with it all night. I could get up in the morning, put it on the fast charger, uh, you know, make my coffee, take a shower, get it back up to like 80% or so, and then go out on a hike and not have to worry about it dying, which was great. And then I'd usually, unless it was a really long hike, I'd have time left over after the hike and I'd know that this would work on the drive home. So if I wanted to stop stopping at gas and use you know, Apple Pay with the watch, I could do it. If I had a long hike that I did, I could just bring the charger in the car and give it a juice for you know, half an hour or so and have enough to get home and do whatever I needed to do after the hike. Positioning and GPS on this is super solid. It's multi-GNSS, which means it can get or receive satellite systems from all over the world, not just the USA's GPS, but also Galileo, China's version of it, 
has more signals to choose from, and it's also multi-bands, and multi-bands uh, essentially, think of it as like AM and FM. There's different bands of GPS or positioning signals. Some of them are newer on the new satellites. They're a little bit uh, more reliable. Overall, what you're gonna get from this combo of multi-band and multi-GNSS is a solid GPS track that's uh, you know, accurate and also reliable across the board, even when you're in challenging conditions. If you wanna track your hikes and get an accurate distance, uh, this is perfect for it. One thing to note, if you wanna tweak your GPS, like you can do on the Garmin watches where you can say GPS only, or I wanna record every second and not have smart recording on, you can't do any of that on an Apple Watch. The location services are essentially wrapped within the Watch OS operating system. So when an app developer like All Trails or whoever makes their, their, their hiking app or their outdoors app for this, they can't have that level of control over the GPS uh, chipset in here. In fact, that location service that Apple uses don't, doesn't just use GPS, it also uses your cellular signal, Wi-Fi signals, the accelerometer and barometer. It's using all of those things to try to figure out where you are and it's evaluating the quality of all of those data sources. So when you're tracking a run, say, you know, in New York City, it might not be using any GPS. It might just be using cell phone towers to triangulate you and figure out where you are. So just a heads up there, you can't really uh, tweak it. The barometer and the altimeter work really well. It's, it's comparable, again, to the one that's in the Garmin. The altimeter is not a professional instrument, so if you're expecting to get an exact altitude, like if you go to the mountain summit and it's you know 1,452 feet, and uh, this says something a little bit different, that's normal. Generally, you're gonna get between five and 20 feet of accuracy uh, with, the, with the altimeter in here. And you, again, with the altimeter, you don't know what it's using. It can be using the barometer to figure out your, your altitude, or it can be using a GPS altitude. It's gonna do whatever it thinks is the most accurate. There's two safety features on here worth noting. One is a very loud siren, which I'm not gonna play for you because your ears are gonna get blown out, but nice to have. I'd also say bring a whistle with you, or a lot of times backpacks will have a whistle. You don't wanna rely on a battery in order to signal, uh, you know, do a distress signal, but nice to have on here. More importantly, there's something called fall detection. Now fall detection, if you enable it, will uh, essentially make an emergency call if it thinks that you've fallen and you can't get up. Just like those commercials, I've fallen and I can't get up. I've fallen and I can't get up. Same thing with this. So if you're in cellular range, it'll use cellulars to uh, send a text message to 911. But if you're not in cellular range and you have an iPhone 14, which has satellites, uh, SOS, it will trigger a satellite SOS for you, which is very, very helpful. Think of, you know, you have a stroke or a heart attack and you're hiking in the backcountry and you fall, you can't press the buttons, you don't know what to do, and you have that fall detection uh, on, it'll do a little countdown to let you cancel it. But if you don't cancel it, it'll try to send a message with a satellite using your iPhone 14, uh, which, you know, I don't think InReach has now. I don't know of any of them that have that now. So that's a very powerful feature and a nice to have when you pair this with the iPhone 14. People ask me all the time, why does this not have satellite communications built into it? At some point they will, the technology is just not there yet, uh, I think to have that small of a uh, satellite communications device into a watch like this. But in a couple of years, you can probably see something like that. When Apple made the announcement for the Ultra, they had all these Ultra athletes, you know, going across the Sahara, and I thought, wow, this might actually rival the Phoenix or the Epics. Big, big problem. There's no navigation software bundled on the Apple Ultra. You have to buy a third party or get a third party app in order to do that. You can't do offline maps with walking directions in Apple Maps, and the workout app has no maps whatsoever. The workout app that comes bundled with it is very basic. You can customize some of the data fields when you're hiking, but it doesn't even come close to what you can do on a Garmin unit. Very, very basic with no offline navigation. So that's a major, major fail for a watch that's not cheap, that's uh, marketed as an ultra watch for outdoor athletes. Outdoor athletes usually need to navigate when they're going farther and not having that integrated into the Apple Watch experience was a big, big fail. 
I'll talk about some apps that you can use to address those problems, but again, you know, you're jumping through hoops to do that. Another thing to know that if you're using the workout app, you have to uh, allow it to sync with health, which it'll do. And then once your workout is in health, you can send your hike to places like Strava or other places where you might record the hike. You can't do that directly, or you can't export a GPX file or a track directly from the workout app. Uh, it's very limited in what it does and what it offers. And again, that's probably by design. You know, Apple has this model where they give you the basic software, whether it's on a Mac or an iPhone or the watch. And if you want more features, you go to the app store and you buy something else. And it's the same thing for this. But again, I think if you're going to market something as an ultra uh, athlete tool or watch, you, sh you should have some navigation and some offline maps on there. So big, big fail there. The one way that they did address navigation was by introducing the Compass app or the enhanced Compass app. And that was a major clue that Apple isn't really in tune with how hikers actually navigate using something like an Apple Watch Ultra or their iPhone. I wish they would have come to somebody like me who has practical experience on the trail. I could have told them what to do, what not to do, but I'm not that cool, I guess. But anyway, there's a Compass app and the Compass works fine. And I learned how to navigate before there was GPS with a map and Compass, and it's great to have on there, but I would not use that as a primary tool to navigate in a hike. I can't think of one time that I looked at my Compass app on my watch and I used that to get to the next point on my hike. I look at a map and I see whether I'm on a line, a GPX track or not, right? Or I'm following a route on the, on the watch telling me which way to go based on the line that I have on there. So the Compass has limited, uh, limited usefulness. Now you can drop waypoints now which is a good thing, why not? You can't export them or really do anything with them outside of the watch. And if you want to get back to a waypoint, you can only go in a direct line. And you know, if I've hiked, if I dropped a waypoint, say at my car when I left and I went for 10 miles of wandering around and I got lost and I wanted to go back to the car, that's gonna give me a straight line, which may you know, go over a mountain, go through a river, go through the Grand Canyon, whatever it might be. There's nothing that gives me context or any kind of routing on roads uh, because there's no maps on here. And those are things that the Garmin units just do by default. The Garmin units have navigation built into the operating system. They have track back, they have all of these things. I'll talk about back track in a second on here but all of that's just built into the Garmin watch. And you could just go to an REI, buy like a Garmin Epix, and is, assuming it has a battery charge, go to a trailhead, have it plan out a route for you on trails, and then navigate using maps and being able to see other trails that are around you. It's really powerful. With this, you have to jump through hoops. Getting back to Compass, let's talk about the backtrack feature. The backtrack is supposed to kick in when you're out of self, cell phone range. And the idea there, or Wi-Fi range, the idea there is that you're in the back country and now the watch is gonna help you by taking a point every two minutes so that if you had the backtrack, you could backtrack along those points. Now, I found it didn't work all the time. It didn't kick in and start that backtrack even when I was out of cell phone range. And I wasn't, I wasn't maybe in cell phone range. I was definitely way out of cell phone range, which was disappointing, but it did work sometimes. And it is a useful thing to have, but again, there's no map data and it's just gonna give you uh, every two minutes of breadcrumb to get back to where you started. Contrast that with the trackbacks that you get in an Apple Watch, or sorry, in a, in a Garmin watch. Those are actually tracking you, uh, smart tracking you, so roughly every second or so, and it'll give you a detailed way to get back. And you can also just navigate back to your car. So if you drop the waypoints, say at the trailhead, and you wanna get back the fastest way, maybe you don't wanna take the same loop that you did when you were hiking because you don't feel good, you just wanna get home as quickly as possible. You can do that all on the fly with this, and it's very, very easy. With the Apple Watch, not so much. And a lot of the times, if you wanna make navigation changes or decisions, it's really done best with the phone. Excuse me, doing things on the fly with this isn't really possible. All right, here's the good news. There are two apps that I think work really well. They both cost money, uh, but you just spent $800 on an Apple Watch Ultra, so what's another couple bucks, right? The first is called Work Outdoors, and that gives you a lot of different data screens. You can have offline maps saved onto the watch, uh, and you can also import GPX tracks and get off track alarms and do a lot of powerful things 
with your Apple Watch. That's called Work Outdoors. If you subscribe to the channel, if you're not already, I'm gonna follow this video up with two videos, uh, one on Work Outdoors and one on the Footpath app, which is the next app I wanted to mention. The Footpath app is excellent. It's probably the closest reproduction of the Garmin experience on the Apple Watch and maybe better in a, in a few ways. It's got things like Climb Pro where it's gonna show you if you're going up a mountain or a hill or whatever it might be, uh, but it requires a subscription. Footpath has the advantage that you can uh, use your phone to create a route. You can kind of draw it with your finger. It's been around for a long time, but this is a major, major refresh uh, that was just done in the last few months. And it, it's, it's great. I think it's probably the best app. It's the one I use the most for my Apple Watch. And again, I'll make a video on how to use this, how to plan a hike from start to finish and navigate with it for not only footpath, but work at, with, but also work work outdoors the, 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 as well. So please subscribe if you're interested in that. But that's what I would say. Overall, it's been disappointing with navigation. I hope, I hope Apple addresses this at some point. I'm not holding my breath. Uh, but until then, you have footpath and you have work outdoors. So is the Ultra a good hiking watch? And it depends on who you are. If you are somebody who uses an Apple Watch already and you're tied into the Apple Watch ecosystem and you're using your Apple Watch for all kinds of other things like Apple Pay and music and workouts and to unlock your computer and whatever else it might be, and you wanna be able to have a rugged outdoors watch for hiking, for long day hikes, for even you know overnight backpacking trips, the Apple Watch Ultra is going to be a great fit for you. I think that if you want the best of all of those worlds, you know, you want to be able to do like a rim to rim and track it on your Apple Watch and go home and be able to work on your Apple device uh, using your watch as part of that experience. This is a great watch. This is worth getting over the regular Apple Watch. And if you're upgrading from an older one, I would just go with this guy uh, because it's going to solve all of those problems. Now, is it the best watch for the outdoors and hiking? Absolutely not. It's a watch that you can make work for the outdoors and hiking. The best tool for the outdoors and hiking is one of the Garmin watches. And if you're thinking about uh, getting one, there's two flavors of kind of the, the best and, and latest here. There's the Epix, and the Epix has a uh, high color screen, just like the Apple Watch Ultra does. And it's able to get notifications from your phone, whether it's an Android phone or an iPhone. You can get all of your notifications and do that. You just don't have all of those kind of other smartwatch features. There are apps for this, they're very limited. You can't get the same kind of rich level of apps that you get with your Apple Watch Ultra or any other Apple Watch. But if you wanna navigate, like I mentioned earlier, it's all baked in there. You don't have to sync maps, you don't have to do anything. You really just have to send your GPS track or your, your intended you know, track to the watch, which is very easy, an easy sync with an app. Um, and then you can start hiking. The maps are there, it's all built in. You can use it in any conditions. If you have gloves on, if you're sweating, if you're tired, if you can't see too well, you can just use the buttons to start and stop it. It's really, really built for the outdoors. And I like the Epix, like I said, because it has that color screen. I get about a week or so of battery life out of it. The map detail is great on it. If you want more battery life, you can get a Garmin Phoenix that has a transflective screen. So the screen's not as bright. There's not as much detail on the map screen. Uh, and whenever you look at it, I, I used a Phoenix for years and years. Whenever you look at it, nine out of 10 times, you have to kind of just move it around so that the light catches it right, which is a pain. It's, not, it's nice not having to do that with my Epix, but you can use that for like a month on the battery and you don't have to charge it. So taking battery charging out of the equation is nice. Even with the Apple Watch Ultra, you still have to charge it you know, every day or so. And it's still like another thing that you have to charge. So. Those are my recommendations. If you guys have any questions about the Apple Watch Ultra, please leave it in the comments. Again, I've been using this for quite a while. I feel like I know it pretty well, so I'm happy to answer whatever I can. And again, if you like the video, if you can give me a thumbs up, I appreciate it. Big thank you to all of my supporters. And if you want uh, more videos on Apple Watch and iPhone and Apple Watch apps for hiking, I'm going to focus on reviewing a lot of the different hiking apps uh, in the next couple months, so stay tuned for that. Uh, maybe there'll be something new and improved or that I don't even know about for the Apple Watch that comes up uh, and it'll change the game. Who knows, we'll see. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you out there.